Yeah, hi everyone. This is the, the Forbes um, Railway uh, Station, which is a bit of a museum kind of thing. Obviously an old railway station. We're here in front of the uh, statue of Ben Hall, looking as he perhaps would have looked if he had lived another 20 years or so. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, he's pretty popular around here. Uh, we've just been into the Ben Hall room and we've watched a, uh, a video that was made in probably 1978 or something. Um, with recreations of Ben Hall, and uh, it's quite informative and yeah, good fun. And um, a segment off of the old ABC Big Country show. Yes. Yeah. TV show. TV. Yeah. So it was uh, yeah, it was good. So and uh, a couple of Ben Hall T-shirts, and we're about to go see the uh, cemetery of Ben Hall's uh, uh, grave site, which is just up the road. So. So how do you film that? Finally here at the gravestone of Ben Hall. Yeah, great, great. I've been looking at this picture for months and months and months, maybe a year, a year and a half, and uh, finally on the spot, it's fantastic. Looks like it's well taken care of, so yep. someone's looking after yeah, it. Yeah, and so when there. you make the film, they're just going to chase you out of Forbes with the big yeah, sticks? Yeah, that's it. After my film, they'll, 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 I'll be barred from Forbes because I would have made Ben Hall to look like a rather nasty character. So. Um, Which he was. He was sometimes nasty. He wasn't an innocent, but he was. Uh, but he was a troubled young man, and it's yeah, it's the troubled young man that we want to show. Um, we can empathise with him, though we can't. Though we don't need to agree with him. So, I'm sorry, Ben, but I'm just telling it as it was. It's my aim to tell it how it was. He's going to come get you tonight, I think. <laughs> okay, this is uh, this is Kate Foster, who is the sister of Ned Kelly. Uh, she was characterised in the movie oh, and the TV series of Ned Kelly. Um, and uh, for some reason she ended up being buried here only, uh, I don't know, what's that, 15 metres, 16 metres from, from Ben Hall? Mm. So I don't, oh, she must have lived in she this area. She drowned in the river. She drowned yeah, in the river? Drowned, yeah. Down in the river. Yeah. I just learned that just then and so did you. Okay, hi. We're in uh, the town of Canoundra, uh, which is uh, just outside of Yugara. Um, this, where I'm standing is the site of Robinson's Inn, where um, Paul and his gang bailed up the inn for three days. They did this on several occasions. Uh, as you can see here, there's a plaque, um, which talks about, here this place stood the, stood the hotel known as the Canoundra Inn and later the Miner's Arms in 1863, when licensed by William Robinson Jr. It was a scene of raids by Bushrangers Gilbert, Amelia Hall, Burke and Vane. So, yeah, so this is the spot, although it's since been rebuilt into another hotel where it all happened and as you can see I think this area here if you look out here this area was once called the square and this is where um, this is the central part of Canoundra and Canoundra was a, a place the bush rangers like to visit quite a lot so it's really a nice little cute town and we're going to go have a look at the uh, if we can get in we're going to go see if we can get into the museum and have a look I don't think it's open today but we've got a phone number of the person who runs it so we might be able to get in there today we'll see right here in this street in front of the old of the Royal Hotel here which was once Robinson's Inn uh, 143 years ago somewhere in this spot pretty much exactly on this spot uh, Ben Hall and his gang held up um, the entire town, they rounded up the entire town and brought them all here to this spot and kept them locked in the in the inn and partied with them for three days. Not only did they uh, do that with everyone that was in the town, but everyone that came through, they held them up and this entire section of the street here, who knows if the buildings were here, but this whole section was filled with uh, carts and horses and buggies because everyone who came through the town in either direction was stopped, the horses were left outside in the carts and they were brought in. And that happened for three days. So by the end of it, there was this pile of buggies and carts we were in the centre of the street. So, yeah, 143 years ago, go back and that will be here. So. After the escort robbery, Gardner and the boys came back through Wioga, which is just behind us, past Maguire's house, past Wioga behind us, and they went straight up there onto the top of the hill, and they spent here, yeah, up there, and uh, they spent two or three days dividing up the gold and the money. They would have been backwards and forwards down here for food and a bit of bread and some gin, probably, and some water. So backwards and forwards here. After about three days, 
Pottinger was somewhere else, but Inspector Sanderson thought I'd better just go and have a look. Might go and have a look around Wioga. A few of the boys there, see what they've been up to. And just the, the day that Sanderson turned up on a patrol coming past Maguire's towards Wioga, Gardner had sent Gilbert back down here for some, um, what do you want, saddlebags? He's, he's in, right. see, go and see if he can get us some saddlebags. So he went here, none here, and he went over to Maguire's, or he was on his way to Maguire's, and just he was heading past the homestead here, Sanderson came over the hill, that hill next to Maguire's house. Gilbert saw them and thought, Jesus, the police, and he turned around and galloped back here, and Sanderson thought, you beauty, and he chased him. And then these guys up on the top of the hill could see Gilbert galloping, and there's something wrong, and straight behind them, three police. And they would have been in uniform at that time? I think they possibly were in uniform, but it wouldn't matter. They, From up there, they could see a horseman galloping, and that's there's something wrong if you see a horseman galloping. There's some emergency, because they didn't usually gallop everywhere. And then behind him, three other guys galloping in a cloud of dust. And guard, they knew instantly it was the police. Yeah. So what did they do? They had to pack up all their gear as quick as they could, get it onto the pack horses. But one of the pack horses they were using was, was really tired, and they, they took off in the other direction. They had about 10 minutes start. But yep. because the pack horse they had, it was actually one of the old coach horses from Escort. Yep. So it had gone all the way from Forbes to Yugara pulling the coach, and the next day it had carried all the gold, probably about 200 kilos worth, back here. Had a day or so's rest, but the thing was still exhausted. And then they've suddenly saddled it up and tried to gallop it back in the other direction. Yep. It just couldn't make it. And then they had to let that horse go because Sanderson was coming up over the hill. Mm and he got quite close, they let it go and they lost some of the gold there. That was the, that was the gold that was recovered, yeah, was what they lost of the pack horse. And they separated. How much? Uh, they, had, they got 14,000 pounds worth. I think Pottinger got a couple of thousand pounds down near Tamora on when, the Bland Plains. When he took... Um, took Gilbert and Manns and, yep. and so on. So he, they recovered a little bit there and they got another couple of thousand pounds. Uh, actually, they got about half the gold back, the police but none of the money. The, the boys all had the money, yeah, and, right. and at least half the gold. And yeah. of, the, the, of the money and gold, I think Gardner had his, more than his fair share. So I, where... I always imagined Gardner up on top, because he had these scales, and he used to weigh the gold out into little piles, and he put the money into little piles, but then, and some of those farm boys weren't very smart, so I just got this mental image of, and Gardner was, and, and, and Gardner with his big pile of money, he'd say, one for you, one for me, one for you, yeah. one for me, one for you. Yeah. So he ended up with three quarters of it. Yeah. So yeah, one for you, one for me. Oh, you're good. <laughs> so where is Wiago Hill? At, that's it there. Yep, that's the one. That's where they were. Are we going up there now, are we? Yeah. Yep, that's where we're going to go for a little walk. And up there is are the rocky outcrops where they yeah. camped for... Yeah. Just there, actually, just near that tree was their hut. Right, that, and that was John Brown's hut. Yes. Um, now, that's, this, is, this, is the very, this is the location here of the very famous set thing where Gardner was almost captured by Pottinger because yeah. Pottinger knew that they were, were lovers and he brought some troopers out here one night and they surrounded the, yeah, they were the hut in the, yep. and they watched the um they, they, when a the light came on they saw a man come out this is like like one in the morning or something like that mm. they came out and he hopped on his horse and as he was riding um took, came riding back towards them that's when Pottinger stepped out and called him to on him to stand in the queen's name or something and he fired, chink, and the rifle just misfired. And, that, and Gardner had one chance, and he just went boom, and he took off. All the other troopers were firing and firing at him. And so basically, Ben Hall lived across the hill over there, and then he had these extremely good-looking chicks living just nearby. Um, well, he was already <laughs> married one of the extremely good-looking chicks. That's pretty, pretty lucky to be out here and have... Have some hotties just across the hill. I think they're all goers too, mate. Yeah. <laughs> well, they seem to be, even in the town over there, they well, seem to be yeah, pretty keen. You like that sort of thing? You met some on Friday night. Yeah, they're pretty keen. Yeah. 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 It's probably about a kilometre and a half to Maguire's hut. Yep. And another half kilometre to Hall's. So they were all... Sort of in a line. All in a line. There was a road that went probably... A, 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 uh, across that dam, yep. across through the creek, and it went right past Maguire's hut and came down here and it came in front of Wioga and then headed off to the south, an old road. So once again there's the river behind us, is it? That's a creek behind creek us. Behind us. Yeah, yeah. No river near here. No, so they just, just had... All to... creeks. With, and in those days they all had water. Yeah. They're fairly dry 
today. Yeah. But all those creeks had water in them in the old days, which yep. is why the homestead was here. Yeah. Yep. Well, they had a, a well. Okay. Yep. There's a well here, so there's water down there. Anyway, yeah, that was this was Brown's hut, right here. So not that big really. Probably just two rooms. Pretty basic. So yep. Frank Gardner walked in the front door there. Yep. Walked out the front door there. Probably stables. Maybe just to one side. Over the homestead yep. there. And yep. Pottinger was just in here somewhere, surrounded back out there in the in the bush. The, the, the thicker bush in those days, more trees. They were hiding there. Gardener came out, went and got his horse, and um, crept, rode off in, in that direction. Because he rode back past where Pottinger was. Yes. And that's where Pottinger pulled the trigger and clicked just here somewhere. The gun misfired. Gun misfired. And then he Incredible. came. Incredible. Incredible that that could happen. Yep. It used to, not was not uncommon, but they got the biggest outlaw in the land two yards away. Nothing. Yep. How lucky. And then he mm. got he got away, and then um, and of course the police returned back here immediately, and that's when Warrigal yeah. was arrested. Yeah, he was in bed here. Yep. And they grabbed him. And they left Kitty him. alone for some reason. Yeah, Kitty could have been prosecuted for harbouring a bush ranger. Yep. They arrested. So there was a bed in one of these rooms, the kitchen here, and the chimney. That's probably the remnant of the chimney. Oh yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Chimney remnants. Yep. Half of the rooms. Just generally they were only two rooms. Mm. And sometimes with a little veranda on them. Yep. And I think it lasted until oh, probably the nineteen fifties. When it was, Yeah, because they didn't have concrete back then. No, no. No concrete. And then I mm. see willows went here. They're pepper trees. Peppercorn trees. We had peppercorn trees on Mum and Dad's place, yeah, Matt. Yeah, they're everywhere. South American tree originally, but everywhere. I don't know what the attraction was. They sent a good shade and. Yeah. And that's the old um, match to move. That's the old. Uh, no, fireplace. Fireplace. Yeah. And the Wiego. Like had some uh, modern bricking done. Yeah, well, it would have been rebuilt over over time. Chuck some new bricks in. Yep. Alright, so this. Okay, so Kate, yeah, so Kate Brown's hut is just. From here, it's just, you know, it's within. Actually, I've got a point. Yeah, just within QE there. So she's just in. So you can see Mum. Mum can keep an eye on her. So these are quite old bricks because the. The frog mm. is uneven. Oh yep. yes, it's quite uneven. And they did have bricks back then. Yeah, the old yeah red even bricks. from the eighteen sixties, because there were brickmakers came out here, and brickmakers were in in brickmakers in big demand for chimneys. Cause mm. Yeah, if you didn't have a proper brick chimney, you couldn't have it. You'd have to make it out of stone, so gather all these things. But if you could get some bricks, see at Connolly's house yesterday, we saw a few bricks lying around. Yeah. And, that would have been, they would have had to cart them out from Forbes, but that's no big problem. Put some in a dry and buy some bricks. Just make a. And you won't get them home from Bunnings in, in an hour in the back of your trailer. You exactly just take two that. days to bring them out yeah. with, you yeah, know, yeah. a few bullocks. Well, if you're waiting for supplies, you just pick up a few bricks every time you went in there. Exactly, yeah, yeah, and you could, you could do that. Of course, Connolly wasn't living in that house after 1865, someone else was. And that house, like most of these, like Goimbla, like this one, Connolly's house, Strickland's house, they all lasted till about the 1920s or 30s yep. and they all seem to have burnt down so there's probably some old oboe living in there smoking in bed and caught fire and it was a shame really. Yeah. So all of them, a lot of them ended up getting burnt down in the 1920s and 30s accidentally. It's an accidental fire. That is a shame. Smoking in bed, yeah. What the steps over there? Oh that was, see this was quite a big building had the main homestead here. There's photos of it. You've seen those. Yes. Yeah. And then that's a that was a, I think a, a storeroom back there. And then there was other bedrooms here and the main yeah. homestead here with a veranda. It seems so and much flatter on that photograph for some reason. Yeah. 
So no, this has got quite an incline. Yes, it has. Yeah. That's original, that wall there and the steps. Oh, yeah, probably 1920s, that. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was rebuilt yeah, in yeah, that time. Yeah. So these stones are, could be 1860s, certainly, or 1850s even, certainly. Uh, but these are later. So a lot of these homesteads were rebuilt and rebuilt. There was a well here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where that was. It's been filled in now, perhaps just there. And the road that went past that dam at Maguire's uh, just went probably down behind those pepper trees there and the, the road came down here and headed headed south and back to Grenfell. Yeah, an old road there, round past Wioga. That's it. Yep. Oh. Hmm. Beauty. So quite often you get them to prove that there was a house in a certain area on a certain day. Well, right. actually, yeah, out on the Billabong Creek once, where we were yesterday, a couple of years ago when I was out there, I um, just went, was looking in the creek, and a big flood had gone through a few weeks before, and sitting in the bottom of the creek was a black beer bottle, probably from the 1870s. All right. Just like it had been washed out of the bank. Wow. And just lying in the bottom, perfect condition. <sighs> but what they used to do, they used to quite often build the toilets on the bank of the creek, Oh and yeah. What the guy and the toilet was a pit near the edge of the creek, and they'd be sitting in the toilet, reading the newspaper, and they'd be drinking a bottle of beer. And when they finished the beer, they'd drop it down. And there's a guy I know up near Tullamore, the, on the Bullock Creek, the, the bank of the creek near his place fell in one day, and there was about 40 beer bottles. Crikey. In perfect condition. It was obviously an old toilet, <laughs> but 40 perfect black beer bottles. And these guys <laughs> are drinking, they're dropping down the toilet. They were black, were they? Yeah, black. Yeah, thick black. And because uh, this is really thick, yeah, yeah, and round, and the bottom was concave like that. Just hold it up, yeah, they're, yeah. Mm. So they're quite, they're quite common, those and things. This is a what, a castor, castor oil, oil bottle. bottle, yeah. How yeah. blue it is, it's like those glasses yeah. we saw in the museum, yeah. yeah, 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 nice colors, yeah, yeah. So all those are those guys that make a whole business out of buying and selling and collecting these bloody old bottles. There was a um, pair of glasses in the museum yesterday. They looked like sort of John Lennon glasses, yeah. and they were tinted this colour blue. Holy, holy! Well, sunglasses or something. from 1860. Really? Yeah, that's what the, the sign said. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Wonder if Stuart is a spyglass, like a telescope or right. oh, binoculars. Yeah. Did they have them in the Civil War? Yep, definitely. Well, and, they, they, and the rifles had telescopic sights. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but you just don't know if the bush rangers and the cops ever had them. Never ever seen any reference to it, and I've never seen any in a museum. But I, I think one of the reasons is that even though you could get up the top of this hill and see a long way, what you have to remember is that generally all this was timbered, it had bush here. So even from the top of that hill you could see, from the top of that hill there, where we're going next, you can probably see probably 15 kilometres out here, it's, mm. it's, it's surprisingly high. But in those days, you wouldn't have been able to see anything except trees. Yes. Do you know what I find surprising is if they were up there, mm. how come they didn't get more of a head start on the guys that were galloping across here? That you could gallop up there in probably 15 minutes, and, and they were only 15 minutes behind them. Mm. And the police had started fresh from just back up here somewhere. Mm. And they had to pack their gear. They had to, so get they had to all pack the all their gear up. up. And we're probably talking 400 kilos of gold, a lot of weight. Well, 200 kilos of gold, and there was all the banknotes. Had to get everything ready, get on the horses, and go. So it probably took them 10 minutes to do that. Police took 15 or 20 minutes to get from here to there. So they were only 10 minutes behind. But they get, did they get close to them. They like yeah. They, they got close enough so that Gardner had to let that pack horse go. Yeah, and, and they lost uh, some of the gold. Charters could see them. He said yeah. that he yeah. saw them coming, and they yeah. like you know a few hundred meters yeah. away. Yeah, well, if it was me, there was only three police. I would have turned around and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have given up that much gold. No. That's just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but they didn't. See, quite often they generally didn't want a confrontation with the police. Mm. They didn't want to bring on a confrontation. Ned Kelly did. Yes, he did. He had a huge one, but he was a bit angrier though, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. Gilbert didn't seem to mind too much, but... No, um... no but Ben Hall and Gardner, they didn't want a confrontation. Where are we going, Matt? This is uh, Wiego Hill. This is the hill the gardener sat on and uh, waited after you, after the escort, and he could watch over the uh, Welsh homestead and so on. So up we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, we're climbing up Wago Hill. Okay. There's a this a the steep climb. We're walking up the steepest side, but it's also the shortest. There's your car, It's great, you got to the fence there, that's the It's a car. That's the view. Al, got that burn in your legs yet? No, I'm good. You don't need me to tell you that. No. <laughs> I certainly don't. Yeah. Yeah. There's holes in the ground everywhere around here. What's that? There's holes in the ground everywhere. See it from up here. Probably the 1920s would come up here and spend all their time digging this up. Yeah. And we're not fit enough to dig all that up. Yeah. Over about a week. <coughs> but, uh, you can just come, if you come here to these rocks, you can see Riago. What's that? Oh, that's the wedding. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll, show, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um. Fuck. Oh, it feels good to be resting. Yeah. That is a deceitfully hard climb. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um. Is, uh, I can see we over perfectly from here. So it's. You know, can you see that that dead tree there? Yeah. So that and that but the green field, that bunch of trees. Yeah. Protruding into the paddock. That's we homestead. So without those little pine trees there, you'd have a perfect view of we homestead and the road between we and here from this position. So when Sanderson and the police were chasing uh, Gilbert back up here. They would have been here, probably had someone on watch, and he would have said, Jesus, horsemen galloping, and then round past Wiogo Homestead, three more policemen gallop, a horseman galloping, horseman galloping, something wrong, big danger, three chasing one, police, let's go. <coughs> Simple as that. That's stuck. They can see it perfectly from here. Direct line. And the green hill, see that mate, see the just between the branches of that dead tree, those little trees poking yeah, yeah. out, that's where we were. That's Wioga Homestead. That's where the... the so that's Wioga Homestead right there behind those trees. So looking at this little section here, looks mostly covered in trees. Yeah. See that, just that yeah, one little... That, yes, that's a, a low range of hills, which, um, which heads part of that Wioga range. But it's just a low range of hills. So you can imagine that little one section is probably what all of this looks like. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for them to see the track, they can see the track from um, from Weoga Station from here. Yeah, because yeah, that's clear, that's the open, but obviously they can't, wouldn't be able to see someone approaching through the trees. But the police, when they came up here, when Gardner was up here, they, they could see them coming up the track. And the horsemen galloping, that's danger. Yeah. Like kids crying, something wrong. Yeah. Dogs barking, something wrong. Horses snorting, yep. something, something wrong. wrong. 
and, and they are tuned to all those sounds, things, sounds, things sounds. yeah. You can see horsemen galloping, what is going on here? Yeah. This is an ideal spot, perfect. They'd hobble the horses up here and just leave them grazing here. Horses yep. won't go far, they've just got the hobbles on. Just walk around here, so all their horses are here, all their guns and that are here. Yeah. If it rained, well, okay, you put the ponchos on. But they'd be just here somewhere with a camp, bit of a campfire going, maybe in here. And, uh, and, and divide up all the gold. Yep. And the cash. How could that, that be? Two or three thousand pounds. It's like a, a million bucks in cash each. Mm. Just sitting, right, you know. sitting up here uh, with a lovely view, counting your uh, spoils. Counting all the money. Yeah. And you've got a couple of guns in your belt. That's it. Perfect. Nice. A couple of ladies down the bottom waiting. Yeah. <laughs> man's dream. You'll go uh, to the left of the wedding when you go to Yarra. Yes. So you're driving down there. Okay. You can put a house up here too. Yeah. So if you could yeah. up here, I would be convinced. Yeah. How yeah. good would that be? That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Nice big two story place, so you have a 360 view. Yeah, looking right out there. Broadband, yeah. internet, that, you need that. On the side of Weoga Hill. And this is where I'd like to have Gardner and leading his boys up the mountain. Although we maybe probably wouldn't do it on this side, we'd probably do it around the corner there. That way we'd be looking a long ways and into the, uh, the pinnacle. And probably give us a better background than the green fields that you can see through the trees here. Look this angle back across this way, see that there? Yeah, yeah that's right, that's a good angle because it cuts across out. that other hill. Yep. Someone coming across that, that hill there with a big zoom on the camera. Yep. Across that hill and then, yeah, then even even up this slope back down here. Yes. And that, the shoot shot not going to come over that hill because you have the camera here with a big zoom on it. Yeah. Absolutely, and you'd have just a crew member with a with a CB over there and you just go, yeah, okay, action, go. And they just, yeah. off they go. And, and, and there's no... If you kept to the left of that pine tree, there's no, you don't have to worry about any digitally enhancing there because... It's no, that's right. It's all covered. It's blue behind, you know, there's mountains out there and you can see that's very steep. And you could, you know, come so down Matt, here. You, you, could you get these guys coming down the side of that hill from here, you know, through the tree? Oh, absolutely. Up, like, up the, you know, absolutely. If they yeah. came across that way and then through there, how about... Yeah, straight through there. Yeah. Yep, you'd probably... Yeah, yeah, yeah. look at that big oh, tree there. Yeah, that's right. A big one there and it's... Someone coming across the here, you don't have a problem with the skyline. That's right. Yeah. So some pretty spectacular trees here. Horsemen from down low. Yeah, yeah. Shooting up, walking, riding across there. Heading up to the rocks. Now the potential up here is yeah. great. Yep. So you want to shoot up here, Matt? Absolutely. Still coming down the side of Wogo Hill. You've got some amazing scenery here. It's, not, it's sort of reminiscent of even um, like the, the base of the freeway back in Adelaide, you know, Mount Osman. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is Yugara, and now we're travelling up the Escort Way to Escort Rock, right here. It's like um, three different ways of the same and the same thing, but the same three different things. Hi everyone, we're here at Escort Rock, just uh, around the corner here, help me, is the exact location of where Gardner, Ben Hall, Gilbert and uh, about five other guys held up the Escort coach and uh, took one of the biggest gold, it was one of the biggest gold heists of the time and also uh, still is in, in, in the British Empire that is. You know, that much money, you'd think that the cops would have had more than just four troopers. You'd think they would have had like 20. We kind of need Peter here to talk it away, don't we? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do a big, just going to get a big three. 
Al and John are standing where reportedly the bush rangers were hiding. Um, we can't show you an example of lying down here because there's too much cow crap around the way, around the place. But they would have been apparently. They, how, how far away would they have heard them coming? Pretty quiet. Uh, well, apparently they saw them coming. And they just, and they just, they're already. They're just sitting here smoking and chatting away quietly, just waiting. So these rocks here is where they once lay. So somewhere we're passing in a another universe. We're actually passing right through the gang here. So this is the big rock where apparently, according to Peter, they weren't behind that rock. Um, but I think uh, to, to have Gardner and a couple of guys be actually behind that rock would be would be very good. They uh, saw the the coach approaching from around that bend there. And around the corner towards them. And then straight up to the rock. Then they attacked them here. The dray teams were laid across here. And the coach trying to make its way, trying to get around, probably capsized somewhere in that little gully waterway there. And the troopers, having been wounded, made their way down through there and away as fast as they could under heavy fire. So you can see from the rocks here that they would have been very camouflaged lying flat and I'd say that there probably wouldn't have been many people over here because they're a bit far away. There might have been one or two but I reckon they all would have just lit, 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 been along this ridge here Just lying down and waiting. Much like Johnny and Al are doing right now. I'd have a cigarette seeing as they were. Yeah. And there you are. <laughs> yep, this is where I wanna I wanna get a really good shot. But I might get you up here, Johnny. Could you get someone lying flat on there and they will be able to see it? No, it's a very slopey rock. Oh, okay. Um, it's not flat up here, it's very slopey. I want to get a, I want to get a, a, an excellent shot of Gardner just sort of sitting up here with a, with a uh, smoke or something, with a cigar or something, just sitting here waiting for the rock, wait with his rifle, waiting for the... While all the other guys are sitting around there having a smoke, you know, Gardner sort of up the top just sort of watching. Keeping an eye on things. And I'm looking down into the area where they would have seen the coach coming. They would have seen it coming. Its first appearance would have been just across here where that car appeared. Yeah, just through here. The track makes its way around and up the track. You know, probably in those days, these trees that we can see here, they probably would have been, they probably wouldn't have been this clear. Hey, how'd the, uh, how'd you get up here, monkey man? <laughs> Just, you know, farm boys. Mr. Piss Week here had to get a hand up. Uh, there's Al probably sitting where Ben Hall was. Hi, everyone. This is Escort Rock. This is the place where it all happened. Um, and I'm just going to quickly talk to you the action about what happened and, and how I can imagine seeing it uh, on the screen. Uh, the, uh, the gang was hit, had been here since um, very early morning preparing. They were wrapping up their disguises. Those that wore disguises were wrapping themselves up. They were smoking, drinking, 
taking it easy. Gardener was probably on the lookout and um, waiting because in that direction, that's where the that's where the coach was going to come from. Leaving Forbes, I think it was uh, midday. It left Forbes and got here about three or four hours later. Um, now, uh, along sometime during the morning, uh, two bullock teams came along, two drays. Uh, we don't know which direction they came from, could have been either. But Gardner decided that he would use them, so they bailed them up. And probably somewhere around here they um, uh, got the drivers, they, they bound and gagged the drivers, which was um, a few men and a child apparently, and uh, got them to lie underneath the drays as though they were sleeping under there. So when the coach came along, they were, that the road was just blocked. Uh, now with the road blocked, they thought that the coach could would stop and then they would have a chance because if the coach took off, then they, they, they wouldn't be able to stop it. So it was very important for them to stop it. Um, and they wanted it to stop right here because they were, uh, according to the accounts of the trial, they were hidden um, along this ridge here of rocks. Um, you can see them in the background here. So um, we, they don't think that there was anyone behind this big rock, essentially, but I kind of I think that, that you know one of them would have been probably Gardner. Um, you know, being the brave and the and the leader, he would have been pretty close, hiding behind it. But they were lying down behind these rocks, sort of camouflaged, waiting for the waiting for Gardner to step out and fire first. Uh, Peter Bradley is of the belief that they did not shoot the coach. Uh, directly that they were shooting over the top. They all had shotguns uh, and a couple of pistols um, and they were shooting over the coach to scare them um, because if they were shooting the coach at 20 meters with shotguns they would have blown away everybody in one volley. Um, so it's a little unrealistic to think that um, those cops could survive um, that. So they must have been shooting over the top to scare them off. Um, now a couple of people got hit uh, anyway because uh, they were sh firing shotgun pellets, so stray pellets got some people in the arm. One guy got shot in the testicle. Um, one guy was uh, unconscious and, and fell off the coach. The driver tried to get them into a gallop, and he tipped. Uh, and in trying to go around the team, he had to go off the uh, he had to go off the road, and he fell down. I would assume that he would have fallen down somewhere in that little gully there, in that waterway, and the coach just capsized. Boom! The cops they took off and ran down there. Uh, to which the cops who, uh, who were running away, they could hear the men on the rocks cheering and they all ran down and started looting the gold and all the money that was in there. And there was a lot of it, probably to the equivalent today of about $4 million. Uh, and uh, of course their friend who was waiting with the horses on the other side, after hearing the shooting, brought the horses around. Now we don't know if he brought them over the mountain there, that would have been a bit tricky to for one man to bring, you know, 12 horses over, uh, or however many they had with them, at least one for every man, maybe with a couple of others. Um, but, you know, just thinking logically, um, he may have actually, if he was waiting on the other side of the valley, he may have just come around this hill, around the mountain, and actually come up from where the coach came. So, uh, you know, five minutes after these guys were pulling apart the boxes and everything, um, here would have come Dan Charters, with you know all their horses. They did take one of the coach horses, um, so they obviously had more gold than they could carry on all their horses and stuff, so they needed one more. So they took one of the coach horses and, and strapped it with gold and, um, and money and whatever else, and they took it. Their gold came in these big boxes, these great big uh, wooden boxes, uh, very, very thick, um, with padlocks and everything. And Gilbert was ordered a couple of days before by Gardner to go into Forbes and buy a couple of hatchets, um, especially for the occasion, as well as shotguns and some food and things like that. And um, they went to a place called Newell's, which is, I'm not sure where, where that is in, in geography wise, but, um, and they went to Newell's, which I think was an inn or something like that, or, or a homestead, and they camped there and they uh, broke open the gold boxes uh, with their hatchets that they had bought and so they smashed these boxes up, they got all the gold, loaded them into their saddlebags and they kept going, I think in that direction to, to, the, uh, to Weogo and they rode day and night for a couple of days, just really pressed on and it was raining. Um, when the, when potting a, a track came here and then tracked them, uh, once he found out about the robbery about four hours later, 
they got to Newell's and they found um, a campfire that has recently you know, gone out and so on. And in that campfire, they found remnants of the gold boxes that after hacking them up, they burnt them. Uh, they also found remnants of um, the, the disguises that they wrapped themselves up in, in for their faces, the comforters, the scarves. And they were found in there, remnants of them were found. And they also found at the foot of a big gum tree, um, a great big uh, cooked bone with all the meat taken off. So the gang obviously got some, you know, a big leg of something and had cooked it up and they all had a feed and then they took off and kept going. So that's the story of the escort rock robbery. They could have been behind if it was me. There were four policemen there with rifles. I wouldn't want to get too close. No. This would be close enough because you, what you want them to do is stop the coach and then blast them so they take off, which is what happens. That's right. But you don't need to be. Yeah, and it's a bit too close, I think. And assuming that big dead tree wasn't there, yeah. maybe there was one there. So you wouldn't want trees in the way. Or maybe this rock. Here's another one. Oh yeah, this would have been a good one. Yeah, yeah that's too good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll reread it, the transcript of the trial, and just um, get the distances again. Yeah. But he said, what they said was that the, the road was 20 yards to the left of the rock, so the road was sort of going through where that tree is now, yep. over near the fence, and they put the bullock drives there to force them closer, and they're about 30 yards away in the rock, so they're, they're here. Right. They're up here. So at most they would have been there. I reckon some here, they spread out, some here. Maybe someone behind this one. And here. Maybe lying in here somewhere. Here. Where do you think the coach was actually stopped? Where Al is right now? Yeah, near the rock. So yeah. they lying flat there and shooting over yeah. the top of the rocks like in a western. Yeah, well, well, apparently they sort of, they stood up, right. so they're down here, well you can't see them. I can't see you now. Yeah. But there's only one, there's only room for one. They could put a pile of a couple of other rocks up here, but maybe two or three here, a couple over there. They were in a, they were scattered, and maybe even someone behind this one. Well, that's pretty close. Maybe a bit too close. Maybe. That's probably cricket pitch length. That's about 20 metres. Yep, yep. So the coaches stopped there. Yep. And they've jumped up and bang, just scatter gun, shotgun, three or four pellets in it. And if he had all those guys firing at the coach, it would have killed them all, wouldn't it? No, not really, because they're only using the little yep. little pellets. But if they were standing, yeah. if they, but if they were only. Uh, 10 feet away they would have blown oh, yeah, them to yeah. hell well yeah but they're still only going to get hit by little bullets at low velocity because they didn't have a lot of charge in that those shotguns right and it was more to scare them and it certainly been like if it's in the eye or the temple it could have killed you but one got hit here and one got hit in the groin so yeah it, yeah, it could have could have damaged them but i don't oh, you, think you were saying you thought maybe they were more or less they were shooting over the top of the coach yeah otherwise you'd have to think with eight shotguns there would have been more people hit, so the, it's the noise and everything that they were trying to frighten them with, but they really didn't want to kill them. Yeah, it was not Gardner's style, really. No. And he was in charge. Maybe O'Mealy it was that fired at him, that'd be, that'd be his form. You'd yeah. Think. And maybe a couple of others fired at him. And they hit the horses. It must have hit one of the horses in the rump, because it, it would have startled them, and they took off, and all the noise, and they, the horses went over, galloped up over here somewhere, and the coach tipped over somewhere over there, though, sort of off the road, and it mm. hit another rock. 
So I'm a bit hard to tell. I'll, but I'll reread the transcript of the trial and uh, and get the exact distances. All right, that'd be great. Be, it has to be behind these rocks. That's probably a little bit too close. Yeah. But maybe someone was there. Unless Gardner. I know. To me, I, I, I don't know, just... I think Gardner could have been here. Yeah. But imagine Gardner... Um, Gardner could have well been... Uh, yeah, he's watching things from here. Like, if he was on top of the rock watching, and he said... He jumped down, and then he said, Guys, here they are, here they are. Yeah. Um, he could have actually come around here. Yeah. And he could have been in front of the coach. Yeah, it could have been. And he may have stepped out and gone, you know, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Around. I think he was actually giving orders. He was, they could hear his voice saying fire. Yep. And he said fire twice because they had two barrels on the shotguns and they fired both of them off. Yep. So he could have been here. Oh, maybe a little bit further back. Uh, I'm just not sure anyone was really behind this rock. Yeah. For the sake of film, though, it might be. But for dramatic purposes on screen, it might. Have a might... There. Definitely. But I think you've got to have some up here. Offshore, yeah. 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 Oh, they'll, yeah, the most majority there, but I oh, know it's such a good feature, the rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to have them. Maybe you can have a gardener sort of peeking around the corner like this. Yeah. The, the, the coachman and that would have been watching the drays. Yes. Rather than looking here. Yes. Because they thought they were drunk, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd had a big night of Saturday night drinking because it was yeah. Sunday when the uh, the robbery happened. Yeah, this would have been sacrilege in itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It should be so, in church, uh, and that would have happened. Yeah, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll reconstruct events as we think from the transcript, and then you guys can interpret it. No, uh, we'll interpret I'll, as accurately you, as possible. Give you what they, what we think. Thing happen, but yep. because it's not terribly specific, we can then come back and adapt it to, to suit. Yes. But I, I would think certainly they were spread out. I mean, if it was me, I'd certainly have the guys spread out rather than all bunched up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you'd want them, you wouldn't want to get too close because these guys had big rifles, the police, and yeah. one shot from them and that's it. Shotgun, a little bit different because they're only small pellets. Yep. Do you think that um, they would have had more than just two barrels each? Do you think they would have had, they would have loaded back up again? In 1862, guns, they didn't have so many guns. None of them had revolvers. Or I think Gilbert did and Gardner did. Yeah. None of the others did because they were just farm boys and they didn't have revolvers. So, they did. but do you think that after firing the two barrels, they would have th whacked in another couple of, you know, um, unload a whoomp, whoomp, couple more? do that. It's not like shotguns today. You've got to, it takes probably a minute to reload. Right. So when the coach overturned and they ran down to the coach, they didn't have any ammo left. Right. So that's... Yeah, that's so it's not like they just pummeled it with 10 shots each, no, no, no. and so there's like four, like, there's like 80 shots. Cartridges. You've got to load it down the top of the barrel and then ram it down, and you've got to put the pellets in, or the gunpowder in, and then the pellets, then you've got to put a primer in the back, which is a little sort of tiny cap that goes in the back. So it takes like a minute to so, reload. Oh, wow. So it's really, really ancient weaponry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, is, yeah. it was only in the Civil War that they had, they developed bullets like. Pretty. Yeah, and that's what the revolving rifle used. Uh, no, it, it didn't. It? It, no, it used the old ones. They used to have interchangeable chambers. Right. So it was the So when they went down to the coach, they were probably fairly exposed. So why, why didn't the cops just turn around and then fire back? Oh, because they didn't know what was going on, and they, didn't know they weren't that brave anyway. No. And and also, if, they, if there were many of them spread out, as you say, they would have thought, "Oh my goodness, we're sw we're yeah, swarmed." They didn't know whether they had two shotguns each. You're not going to sit around and, and wait. And find out. Yeah. No. As it turned out, so it was just as well the coach overturned, otherwise it could have been five k's away. Mm -hmm. And their, their horses are back here. So if the coach... So in that respect, it, the planning wasn't all that flash. No. So... And it was a good thing they got some bullet teams come along. Yeah, that was lucky. Mm. So this is a perfect spot for it, but there was, things went their way. The other thing was that Gardner picked, I, I presume deliberately, it was a night when there was a full moon. Oh, okay. They left here about 5 o'clock in the afternoon when it was nearly dark in June, so it gets dark about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and they went back over those hills there towards Forbes, travelled all night, but bright moonlight, so he, they can see in the dark, in the moonlight, the travel, full moon, it's quite bright out here, but the police, it's not bright enough for the police to follow their tracks, mm. so pretty smart thinking really, mm. and by the morning they were 40 k's away, yep. way down near the pinnacle, right. On. And then it rained the next day, which made things covered up the tracks anyway. Yes. Because the police were following a day behind, in daylight. They couldn't follow in the moonlight. But these guys could travel in moonlight. Where we are is a station called Goembla. 
um, and over here is the original homestead um, of the Campbell brothers. Uh, this is the location, there is only a, a chimney, I think a ch remnants of a chimney there, but this is where John O'Mealy was shot in the throat and killed when Hall, Gilbert and O'Mealy attacked the Campbells after on a bit of a vengeance attack. So this is the actual spot and uh, somewhere here O'Mealy was buried, but a few days later was dug back up again by his family and taken home. So yeah, so we'll show you what it's like down there. It was over this side that was yeah. the, the barn. Yeah. Uh, on the high, high ground, yeah, that'll be right. This flood's here, so they would have had that cleared down there. That's the oats paddock they're probably talking about. Oh, wait a minute, let me think about that. Because no, they, but they actually had outhouses as well, didn't they? Yeah, all around the place. So other guys would have been, yeah, there was like probably ten houses here. Little yeah. huts and things. Maybe the oats was back here, and they could have been firing back in this way. So somewhere here, uh, was where the big battle went on with all Gilbert, Emily, and the two Campbell brothers firing at each other and probably the fence that uh, Emily was shot at if the house was here well the fence probably would only have been about maybe 50 yeah. metres in that direction oh, 20 or 30 yeah and then so somewhere over there he would have been yeah. shot his throat yeah. was shot out yeah I think he was shot with a rifle he, 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 Campbell had both shotguns and rifles yes he was quite well heavily armed. Yeah, and, a, and with a, a wound like that, was, well, could have been a shotgun, but more than likely a, a big calibre rifle. Yep. And of course his brother was shot in the chest with... Was... Oh, that was with birdshot or something. Yeah, so, so he was out was of the picture. The, that was the other extreme. He, he was shot with his little pellets. It was non-fatal and probably not much of a charge in the shotgun. So just sort of spat it. But the other guy was shot here with a big bullet and a lot of gunpowder behind it. Bang. Yeah, took his neck out. Yeah. O'Mealy and Ben Hall on 19th of November 1863. In ensuing battle with the owner, O'Mealy was shot dead by squatter David Campbell in front of this site. The homestead burnt down in 1935, erected by Barry Ledger and yeah. Kevin Passy. Yeah, they, they, Kevin Passy's written a book. And Barry Ledger, I think, he's, they're, they're mates of Pensing. Right. They're like about 80 now. Right. Okay. About uh, 800 metres from here. Direct line along that fence was where Conley's house. There was a clearing here. All this land was cleared from where we are here to the creek. Um, yep. Just from about that tree. Yep. Probably about half a kilometre back that way. So it's a big open clearing. Yes. Conley's house there. Strickland's house. A K up there. So they used to use this for horses and things. And this was the edge of the the bush just coming around here. Yep. Ben Hall camped in here somewhere. And then when he when he, when he got up in the morning and the horses were over there, he walked out and, and that's where they went, where they cornered him. Oh, Mick Connolly was just down there. And Mick Connolly was a, originally he, a, a... He's a stockman. He was, he was a stockman on this big property which went from those hills to yeah. those hills. But he wasn't part of the gang. Oh, but, no, not but, but he was, was a friend and a harbourer. Yeah, well, a harbourer. I don't think he was really a friend. And so basically he just he wanted the money in the end. He wanted the money in the end, yeah. yeah. So they used to pay him along the way. Yeah. You know, as, as, as over the several months they were paying him because they had nowhere else to go. You're way out here. You need food, you need matches, <coughs> you need ammo, you need this, that, tobacco. So he would get all that and they'd go 20 quid, 10 quid. Mm -hmm. so it was a good little income for him. If he got caught, it was big trouble. What would he get for that? Seven years jail. Right. Yeah, and they were serious about it too. Yeah. Mm. And, and the, the owner of the stock, uh, this station, where the Stricklands just lived up there. But at the same time, the Stricklands had a lot of sympathy for Ben Hall. Right. They yeah. quite liked him, and they knew he was here, and they didn't say anything about it. Right. Yeah. Because well, they that, liked Ben. Because he was really one of them. He used to be a stock owner, just like them, on a property just like this. Yes. And Mary Ann Strickland was one of the people that helped heal his, uh, well, set oh, that, his that, that leg. It was her mother. Her mother was yeah, it? Yeah. It was her mother. Right. Uh, Ten years before. Yep. Signage so of yeah. Ben's old death by the lovely council. Yes. <laughs> map of this, this block of land, which went from the creek back down there somewhere. So they surveyed this block, and in 1870, the surveyor drew the edge of the clearing, and it went right through here, down to the creek. So this was all clear, and on the map he just said, "Oh, this is good Ben Hall." Even in 1870, they they started thinking, "Well, this is this is where." Ben Hall was shot, so it's pretty accurately around here somewhere. 
in this in this general area. So he would have. If you picture this was all bush here, and he's pushed back here, and that's clear. And his, his horses just out here, maybe 100 metres away. Yep. And he would have been sleeping back in here, where where the bush is really thick. Yep. But then, as you get closer to the clearing, the, the trees thin out and you can see further out. But he didn't know the police were hiding 50 metres down there. He walked out, out here and he'd go and get his horses. And then, as he got closer to the edge of the clearing, you, you could see the, see the bloody police. Bullets would be here. If any of them hit him, they'd be still in him. Yep. If any of them missed him, they'd be... If I was a bullet gun, maybe that's it. a car yeah. or something. So they could have been lodged in a tree and then... Yeah, well, that was all clearing, so there'll, there'll be bullets in the dirt out. <laughs> Right. Okay, so that that was cleared. So he came out of the clearing and then yeah. ran back into the saplings and trees. Well, and he, he was just on the edge of the clearing and he ran along the edge of the clearing because there were three police down there and there were five more back over here. Right. So okay. he ran away from them along the edge of the trees. Yep. It wasn't just a, a sudden trees and then no trees. It, the trees thinned out. As yes. He got to the edge. He ran back along the edge of the trees away from those guys and then he saw these guys all shooting at him and he sort of veered a little bit away but they'd hit him by there and he was, he was gone. Yeah, bang, 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 pounded. So they shouldn't really have fired on him, like killed him though, should no, they? No, not allowed to do that. No. no. And so that, that was covered up? Oh, uh, they, they said, uh, no, they said we did it but no, no one did anything about it. No. Yeah, no one prosecuted the police yeah, over it. Yeah. But there had been previous cases where policemen had been charged with manslaughter uh, after a prisoner had died during the course of an arrest. So there were uh, 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 legal antecedents uh, where police could be charged with murder or, murder or manslaughter. Hmm. At the time, at least half the population didn't want to be involved. Yeah. But the other half... <laughs> that tree? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going there tomorrow. Yeah. Gee, they're quite good little signs. Yeah, they're there to, they're to stay, aren't they? Yeah. <coughs> it's like stainless steel. To get some uh, photos. This is, that's why I put it in slow motion in the script. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he, he, he walked out. He's walked out there and... It'll be less than 60 seconds to you from the time he got shot to dying. 60 yeah. seconds here. When, when he first walked out of the trees and saw the police over there and he started running here. Yeah, it would have all just... He about here and they kept hitting him and then he fell here and... How many times was he shot? Was well, he was shot for? with... Uh, well, more than... He was hit more than 30, 30 times. With, with more than 30. But a lot of the hits were with little shotgun mm. pellets. Yeah, so he would have been like, peppered all over his body. Oh, yeah, probably 30 odd in legs, but there's, there's several big ones. He had a, one, a couple here in the forehead from shotgun pellets, and um, the big one in the stomach, which would have certainly killed him anyway. Uh, I mean, the trauma of that will mm. kill you. And, and he got in, blown in his shoulder? Yeah, he had three or four uh, deeply embedded uh, shotgun pellets in the left shoulder. So, that's so the fatal one was the head shot? Actually. Yeah, well, actually, I suppose the photo was yeah, when they could, shot him could point be blank. These. I mean, you could, but they were firing at him, and, and there was like eight of them, and to only be hit 30 times, they, they missed with a lot of shots. Yeah, so it would have been a barrage of. Barrage and he, and, he, and, he, and apparently. They were probably shaking a bit too, pretty bloody nervous. Did they, 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 they and, and he never got one shot off, did he? They never drew the gun. Yeah. Never drew the gun. Yeah, but he lost them when, they, when it broke. And oh, yeah, he was trying to get away, and he had the bridle, and. And then at one stage he was trying to get the gun out, but couldn't, but he'd already been hit. And he was trying to get the gun out, whichever side it was. Uh, and then uh, and then he was hit, hit in the stomach and the gun belt fell off. Yep. Yeah, the belt fell off and I guess the guns went with it. They would have been tucked into the belt. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Crazy. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, and so they, he asked him to shoot him in the end? No, I don't think. He, he, he wouldn't have known what he was saying. It was like, it was seconds literally seconds and I think yeah I think he as they ran up because he, he was he's, he's probably lying on the ground who knows how would he have been lying you, you wouldn't know probably well, according I, think, to I think on his back 
According to the report, he grabbed the grabbed the sapling and he came and he went down. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then and he was still hanging on to it. Yeah. And so he would have been lying there holding on to it, going. Ugh. Well, I think he because it, it said he he convulsively click kicked with his legs as as, as bodies as people died. And yeah. Spasm in the legs, so yeah. he yeah. was on his back. I don't think it would have he been. He didn't make any statement to Billy Dargan. No, no. So there was I don't no. I think it was. It would have been that. I'm dying. Shoot me dead. It yeah, was. No, no, it, no, I no. think it was probably. He was probably yeah, bleeding yeah, from yeah, the nose yeah. and the mouth, going. Oh, shoot me dead. Shoot yeah. me dead. You know. No, I don't. I don't think he said that. I don't think that would have. That, that shows rational thinking. And I think if you've been hit with all those bullets, and especially one through the here, shock of it, you wouldn't be thinking. The shock. You, you're just thinking. You're just murmuring to yourself. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. Mm. It's a simple, it's a, mm. probably about that loud. When, mm. when I read that, he sort of said, oh, you know, shoot me dead sort of thing. It sounded, <laughs> it sounded to me like something that they had made up yeah. to yeah, yeah, an excuse it, for yeah. killing him sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's it's like a fictional he dialogue. He asked us to do it. Yeah. That, that came from Frank Clune in the 1950s. I'm afraid old Frank's got a lot to answer for in the <laughs> Hall history. Yeah. Is he the guy that was in the museum thing? No. No, no, no. Frank, no. Uh, Frank no. Clune, they actually don't like Frank Clune here. And uh, they don't like Edgar Pensig either. He's another historian. Do they like you? Well, so far they do. Good. <laughs> I'm nice to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what we can do is um, walk down to the creek. Yeah, let's do it. So what we're looking at here is the old site of Mick Connolly's hut. Um, as you've seen with the bricks here. Um, this is where, you know, this is the remnants of, of the... Of the uh, Probably the fireplace. Chimney, yep. Of the chimney or whatever. So, and yeah, this is where, in this direction, Ben Hall came from his, you know, saying goodbye to Biddy. He came from that direction and he came straight down here um, to Mick Connolly to uh, meet up with Gilbert and Dunn, and they weren't here yet. And uh, he met him and he got given food and he went back up to the place where he was shot just at about 800 metres that way. Um, now the police, where would they be when they were sort of observing and keeping low and watching? Uh, uh, they, they were back, back, back this way. Right. But but well back. They even though we're going to say they were watching, they probably weren't. They were probably far enough away. Yep. Just to have no chance of being there. But Connolly, they were in constant touch with Connolly. So I. He would I, go out right out there and meet yeah, them. Yeah. Say, oh, I'm just going to check the cattle, and he'd go and talk to the police. Yep. So I would think that they were well away from Ben Hall and, and they couldn't see. I mean you couldn't see no. what Hall's doing from even yeah. from here. No. But Connolly knew he was there. Yep. Connolly knew he was there and, and would have reported back. But it was only a, a day. Yeah. He came what late in the afternoon on the 4th. Yeah, late in the afternoon of the yep. 4th. And they got him the next morning. So it wasn't in 24 hours? No, it was 12 hours. Yeah. Would he, have, would he have spoken to Connolly that night? Yeah, he, yeah, would, have, he would have. He got given a plate of food. Yeah, he would have ridden down here and um, and, and made contact with Connolly and maybe said, is the coast clear? And ridden in. And where's Gilbert and Dunn? Haven't heard. Yeah, they were here, they've gone. And he, he would have said, look, I'm going to camp back over there. Bring us some bread, some tea, some damper, some meat. I'll just be through there, and Connolly, that's 800 metres. And the clearing ran round that way, so he would have just ridden back out from here, back out round there. And, and then having done that, Connolly would have ducked back over here, talked to the police. Yep. So Ben didn't suspect anything from Connolly? Was didn't suspect anything. No. Connolly wasn't nervous or anything? No, no Connolly probably, yeah. Well, he probably might have been nervous, but... He hit it. I would have thought that Ben Hall... And, yeah, you, I would have thought that... Behind that. Mm. I thought Ben Hall would have been a bit suspicious as to because he would have, he have expected that Gilbert and Dunn should have returned. Mm. But see, um, uh, Connolly would have explained to Hall that the three stockmen from just up the road here, Murphy's Meadow and O'Brien, yep. had ridden through yesterday and spooked him because uh, Gilbert and Dunn thought that those three stockmen yeah. were police and Connolly would have said, well, there's no police here. Yeah. Only stockmen. What are they doing? Yeah. And he, and, and he would have said to Ben, they'll be back in a day or so. Don't so did Connolly then possibly see the police patrol? Or was it Stockman? No, we're Stockman. No, we're, we're Stockman. And we know their names. It was Murphy's, Murphy, Meadows and O'Brien. Yep. Okay. 
and it freaked him out because because the cops in those days were patrolling uh, not in they weren't in uniform yeah, when they just, patrolled. Just in plain clothes. In fact, the cops that attacked Ben Hall that day yeah. were in plain clothes. Yeah, they were always in plain clothes uh, on patrol. So in, in in like you said, I think we had this conversation once before. That in in one sense, Ben Hall, having seen all these men run at him, mm. he wouldn't have instantly. He may not have thought they were police. I mean, yeah. he probably but suspected I, they were, but yeah, they I mean, weren't. But they weren't wearing uniforms like in the picture. Yeah, he wasn't going to stop. No. Them. Okay, we're uh, just outside of Fort. This is an old historical village, much like Talon Town, probably just a little smaller. Built in the 70s, apparently. Uh, no longer running. We are apparently illegally jumping the fence. And you're gonna go have a look. That's what filmmaking's about, though. Uh, you know, he's a Forbes boy. He knows the rules. So, guard dog on duty. Beware. Beauty. Come with me, Johnny. Let's go have a look inside this thing. Hopefully, there's no snakes in here. Like this. Oh, I smashed glass. Shit, loads of it. Why did they let this thing go to rat and ruin? Probably wasn't making enough money. Yeah. Clearly. Jesus. These, all this timber though would this be good. timber is just so good. Like, that's just gold, man. That's what you'd want to make your sets and stuff out of, you know? Do you think the buildings would have been red? Painted red like that? No. No. Nah. Maybe kept them in that for it. Look at that, they've got a mud one over there, Matt. A mud one? Yep. There is a lot of material here that's going to waste. Yeah, a lot of good material going to just waste the slate. Yeah. I always think it's sad when they build these sets, like the Deadwood set or these. They have to show they ever did. Yeah, it's too expensive. This is really good too. I don't think the Aborigines around here did any perhaps. And they didn't really communicate much with the bush rangers, did they? No, absolutely nothing. None of this crap about the... The only, the only uh, indigenous people with the trackers that they had in yeah, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And they usually weren't local, were they, the trackers? No, like Philly Dargan came from Sydney. And uh, they had them looking for Ned Kelly and they brought them from Queensland. Really? So he was brought in for the job? Brought in for the job, mate. He didn't do a very good job, did he? No, well, Ned Kelly was smarter than them, that's the problem. Yep. Well, Ned, Ned Kelly was just as good a tracker as the black trackers. Really? Yeah. So these, these bush rangers are pretty, pretty, uh, bushman. pretty good bushmen, yeah. Hey? Dargan did, was involved in halls. In oh, yeah, 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 he was certainly following him. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Ned Dargan was quite good, he was smart and sober and a bit educated. Was this meant to be, um, is this a merely shanty, is it? Yeah, yeah. It was like a booze hut, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, out, way out in the in the Weogo. Or yeah. no, the Pinnacle, wasn't it? No, Weogo. Was oh, no, 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 neither. Um, Aramagong. Am Amaragong. Aramagong. Down past Ongong. You know, rip that down and that can become one of the homesteads. Yeah, this is like a, this is like a resource you just you cannot. And there's the barn. Tootles Barn. Yep. Oh, is that Tootles? Are they saying that's Tootles Barn? Yeah, that's exactly what it would have looked like. Right. Had a door there. You know they were in the in the barn asleep when yep. the cops came. And bang, bang, bang. Yeah. yeah. And they ran off and they went down to Wallenbean or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll just tell, tell the camera this. Yep. Right, this is a uh, a very accurate replica of barns of the time. 
this would have been uh, much, very much like was it Toodles, Toodles or Mutt Billy or wherever they were, uh, when Ben Hall and the gang were inside the barn and the cops approached at dawn and they even poked their head in the door there and and they got fired on and there was a huge breakout and they escaped out of the barn under fire and got into the bush and had to escape on foot. Their horses were they didn't get their horses or anything, and uh, this is a almost you know this would be a perfect replica of it. So uh, we want that. And look at the timber. And the timber's all aged. Just great. Even the galvo. The galvo. Uh, possibly get away with it galvanised, but more. That fireplace, man. Awesome. Like, it's great. You, that you just want to get that photo. Like you'd want. You'd want that, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. like you just want to bring that back. Yep. Sure. Just mark it. Dismantle it. Yep. Photograph the house. There's yeah, another well, the slip rail they'd probably have a, a bigger post and, and this one here would be a, something about that round and there'd be another hole here and they'd just slide it across. Cool. Whereas these are permanent. They're great. Oh yeah. What's over here? There's another have a look over this little rise here. There's another another whole section, another whole building set of buildings. Is, I thought there was like gonna be five buildings. <laughs> This must have cost a screaming fortune. Yeah. You're alive. This is. Is that, about, is that a barn? Look at it all. This just eons of fences. Just. So much fencing. Uh, the other thing is the council would be. Town. Yeah, they might get 50 acres out of town with a backdrop. You know, all those trees along the main road. Yep. So that's the backdrop, yep. and, and then they build this in a paddock somewhere. So, yeah, you know, your shooting, your shooting's done towards the trees, which is yeah. There. You'd have to you'd have to locate it somewhere out of town, quite far, but it would be within a decent di driving distance. Could be five or ten k. That's right. So, it, that, but you could. It would. I think it's a, a re an option to really consider. Yeah, here, there's too many extraneous ha things. Well, you got you just got developed landscape. Yeah. Yeah, if you had a backdrop there of a row of, big row of bush, it would right. start the, and there'd be noise from picks and shovels and yep. people arguing and getting drunk. So you'd have the ch -ch 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 all behind you. When just... they, when, and every little tent would have a campfire, they'd just keep it going all day. Yeah. So lighting it again at night, put a log on and leave it. Come back at night and stay dry. That's awesome. Where the gold was discovered is where they pitched their tents. So in, in in behind the shops in Forbes, those shops have been there in one form or another for 140 years, and the gold was dug about 50 metres behind them. Yep. So just basically behind the supermarket, they were digging behind gold. The supermarket in that strip. But then there were other smaller fields that sprang up a couple of kilometres away in different parts of town, and then. Later, there were deeper mines, about five k's out. Right. Yeah. Okay. But still, so five k's isn't far. No. Essentially, all the gold. The first gold was dug where they pitched their tents. Yep. There you go.
Like, it's still there. How many years ago would this have been? How long? How long would that have been? Ten years. Ten, ten or fifteen years. Yeah. This is basically. Well, hopefully, the fact that it hasn't been pulled down in ten years means they're not going to pull it down next year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically like a strong ring. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking you could do other things other things with this, but you could use take that. that. How good's that? Because you would you'd want to um yeah. use the uh when you create your set for what was it called the Forbes lock up, the, the, yeah. the logs or whatever? The logs, yeah, you could make this out of logs and look at the logs there. Yeah. Right? And then, then you you got your door here. That's it. on the front here as they went away from the logs and they got a sawmill in town yeah. they then put these torn boards yes okay. yeah, metal frame, uh, timber frame up and pack it with mud. Well, it's clay. You've got to have the right sort of clay to do it. They can still do it. Yeah, yeah. Our farmhouse at Bath is mud. Yeah. Uh, 1908, I think, or 1900. Made out of mud. Whole house. Yeah. yeah. But the, the thing with these is you've, you've got to put some sort of coating on them, like a bit of a cement and mud mix with cement in it to seal it. So you've got to have a veranda, otherwise that happens. The mud houses have always got a veranda. Why is that? Because the water just gets it and runs oh, in okay, and right, the whole yeah. thing falls to pieces. Yeah, They've right. always got a veranda. Mud houses. Well, that's that's awesome. This is gold. Just outside of the real Forbes. Yeah. That would be awesome. And I mean that would probably create quite a big buzz in the whole this whole region. Oh, yeah. If you were building a big set yeah. with a number yeah. of streets in this yeah. region, you'd probably have all the historical societies would get behind it. Yes, well, the council here is very keen to promote a Ben Hall festival and to promote, promote anything with Ben Hall. Yep. So, the, so you know, a major motion picture of Ben Hall would be very would right be up, high up there. Right up there, Ali. Yeah, Hall's, Hall's house, about 200 metres along the creek yep. to the north of the road here. Maguire's house probably two or three hundred metres back this way and uh, and, and Wiogo about two kilometres further that way so you've got Wiogo, Maguire's house, Hall's house and the stockyards just up here. Good eye. And this is Sandy Creek, that's Wiogo. Hall's house and probably around those tree line there. Yeah. Now can you take a picture of me in front of the plane? Yeah. Yeah. Sandy Creek, stockyards, yeah. over this way we have Wiogo Hill yeah. And Maguire's house, yeah? Yeah. Cool, and that's... There was a dam there that was next to Maguire's house. You can see the broken yeah. dam. Yeah. Okay. Well, where we are now is we're just a few hundred metres away from Hall's, the location of Hall's homestead. Um, this is where Maguire's house was. Now, this um, Maguire's homestead was eventually taken over by John Wilson. This is the, this is the place where Ben Hall came and he, uh, stayed, he bailed up um, Wilson and he ordered him to make breakfast and get his shoes, sh um, the horses shod and all that sort of thing. But um, Wilson had sent out a man to warn the police and that's when those th the four troopers rocked up and Hall uh, had to dash out of the house without his boots on and leap onto the horse and ride away. So this, that big, you know, very um, famous incident, that all happened right here. This is uh, where Ben Hall had his station down at Wiego. That's a 360 shot of the area. And down there is Sandy Creek. Maguire's house was about there. About 700 yards away was Ben Hall's house, just across that hill. What's that? A bit of glass. All right, found a bit of glass. 
So that sign is in the wrong place. Yeah. Okay. So back in the 70s, they thought this yeah. was where Ben Hall's homestead yeah, was. Because I've got an 1870 map, and it shows a house here. Right. And whose house? The one they burnt down was around there. Yeah. Right. So, so this is actually his brother, and this is actually Wilson's. And then Wilson took over, and this is where Ben Hall came and uh, bailed up Wilson and said, OK, breakfast. And I think the police approached uh, the morning he was here, is that his brother? Probably yes. Came and probably from over that way, and he saw them coming. That's like three or four hundred metres away. He had plenty of time to get on his horse and uh, probably take off up here, maybe up over there. They'd never catch him with no. a couple hundred metres start. But there was a famous... Um there is another the part of the the end part of that scene is that Ben Hall he took off and they followed him up the road yeah. but he jumped into the bush and off he went yeah. and they couldn't get him yeah. and they came back to Wilson's homestead yeah. and they arrested him thinking saying you're a harbour you're a harbour yeah. and he was like no I'm not yeah. and Ben Hall back came back yeah he would have been watching and he was him. watching over the rise there yeah. yeah there's a rise over there and he was just sort of he came up to a point where he could just see above the rise and he actually watched them yeah. escorting Wilson away. Yeah. And then when they left, he came back to the homestead. Yeah, he said, OK, put the eggs back on, I'll, I'll have Yeah, and make sure you tell them yeah, that yeah, I finished yeah. my breakfast. Yeah, yeah good work. <laughs>